All right. So we are on. Um, I firstly just want to um, thank you as well um, for being vulnerable with me because I know how hard it is um, to revisit those. Sorry, sorry. You're right. Thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah, cool. So I just, yeah, wanted to thank you for um, just being vulnerable with me and with the other women that will be able to be listening to this as well. Um, it's okay. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah, so if you just want to, you know, share a little bit about your story and I guess at the end we uh, just um, maybe a bit of advice that you could give to a fellow mum that's actually experiencing um, loss, whether it, she's right in the middle of it or trying to, you know, navigate her way forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so do you want me to start in detail of the whole journey or just the experience of the loss itself? Um, whichever you feel comfortable. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's it can be sometimes helpful to hear the details of the journey um, yeah. so other women can relate. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, just share a little bit feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Just glitch then for a second. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Um, no, that's okay. Um, so good morning. For those that are tuning in, my name is Stacey Fowler and I have jumped on to share my journey of being a mother of two stillbirths. Um, can you just pause for a second? I can just hear my daughters. Okay. <laughs> Round two. <laughs> I don't know. Do I need to reintroduce myself? No, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. No. So, uh, 2011, um, my then boyfriend, but to be husband, and I um, found out that we were pregnant and we were old enough to have a baby, um, in a sense, because we were sort of, you know, we were in our later, our later 20s and thought, okay, well, uh, it was a surprise, uh, I assure you. It was a very big surprise. Um, and off we went to have an ultrasound and I'll never forget the day. So Dave and I are there at the ultrasound and he goes, oh, imagine if there's five in there. And the girl <laughs> goes, don't laugh because there's two. Oh, you're um, And I, I just froze. He said nothing. And my, unfortunately, he's now my ex-husband. Well, sometimes that's fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, he just said to me, you need to drive me to a pub. Now, my husband did not drink. He was not a drinker. <clears throat> and so for him to say, you need to drive me to a pub, we were in shock. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the lady said at the time that our ultrasound was still quite early, um, which was quite interesting because I guess I've always been very in check with my body. So I knew quite early in the piece that I was pregnant um, yeah. and we were we were only maybe nine or ten weeks so it was still very very early to even have that first ultrasound actually yeah um, so anyway so we we had that first ultrasound and we had our bloods down and we had discovered that we were having twins we knew nothing we knew nothing else but we were having twins anyway I went off to the doctors for the follow-up on uh, our ultrasound and our bloods and the doctor said to me that I was oh no what have I done can you still see me yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> you off somewhere <laughs> sorry <laughs> um she said to me that I was having identical twins but one of them um was indicating that it had down syndrome so that's what you know how they they do your bloods and your bits and pieces and they yeah they, they you know what i'm talking about and yeah. anyway, i 
I didn't understand what she was saying because I was like, so you're telling me one baby has Down syndrome and the other is okay and I need to make a decision today without, at the time my husband wasn't there, um, if we're to have one baby or the other. And I was like, that logically in my brain made absolutely no sense because if they're identical, they'd both yeah. have it, was, yeah. what, was what I thought. Anyway, so I left there crying. It was like this little family practice in Windsor. We were in Sydney at the time um, and I was really frustrated. So I left yeah. there crying and I went straight to Nepean Hospital in uh, Penrith for anyone who's watching that's outside of Australia. It's uh, in Sydney and it's one of the biggest, uh, it's one of the biggest hospitals actually um, in Sydney. So I stampeded there <laughs> And I went to three doctors' doors there because they all have private sort of doctors around within the unit of the hospital. Yep. And I had these ultrasound pictures, these blood results. <laughs> and I was 26, I think, 26 or 27. It might have been 27. Tiny, nothing of me, pregnant with twins crying, going... Someone needs to help me and you need to help me now because they're telling me I've got one Down syndrome baby and one normal one. Can I need another opinion? And here I am at these receptionists like I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, we can't help you. And I, kept, I went, I went, the rest of it so it was a, a private women's unit that I ended on the door of Dr Valero um she's very lovely sitting now actually sorry I've just frozen for a second there we go <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, um so I got to she was the fourth doctor's surgery that I knocked on the door of and was like you need to help me I need help I don't know what's going on I don't even know where I am, um, but this is, I need help. And anyway, she took me straight in. Well, first I waited in the, in the waiting room and I rang Dave and was like, I don't know what's going on. There's something wrong. I, can't, I don't know. I'm at this doctor's surgery. I found a doctor. So we went in and she did, because she had the tools and everything there to do an ultrasound then and there. So she did another ultrasound and she said, that I had twin to twin transfusion syndrome. So for those that don't know, um, I so I did have two twins and I had one placenta. Um, so same sex, same placenta, same sex, same placenta, but they had a cord each. So they had their own umbilical cord. So there's two styles of twins. Sometimes they grow in their own pockets and then sometimes they grow together. So ours were, growing together, but because they both have their own umbilical cord, naturally, um, one was taking more nutrients than yeah. the other. So that's why the blood's red, that one baby was developing more than the other. And that's why on their, you know, statistics, scanning, however they do it. Yeah. <laughs> Numbers. I'm not a doctor. Even <laughs> after all of that, I still couldn't tell you the actual breakdown of it, like, log like scientifically. Yeah, but what the what the digits read was one baby was showing signs, you know, to their statistics that would have Down syndrome, and the other would be normal. Where in fact, twin to twin transfusion syndrome is actually where, like I said, one baby's receiving more nutrients, so it's actually overdeveloping. It's getting so much nutrients that its little body can't quite process it but its brain its liver its kidneys are forming where the little baby who isn't receiving as much nutrient nutrients his little body's just forming what needs to be formed so um you know the heart the brain you know concerns with the ki kidneys and livers like so he's I, and i say he's because my baby's with twins, our boys um his little body wasn't developing as it should be um, had they sort of been balanced. Or yeah. So we then started this crazy roller coaster ride of, okay, we're pregnant. Okay, we have twins. 
okay, now we have twins with defects because that's pretty much, and I, and I say that word with love, but it was, a, okay, we, you know, we're, we're going to have complications. We were in a high-risk pregnancy that I think in Australia they deliver 60 of our type of twins a year that actually go to between that 30, 40 weeks. Um, yep. If you think about 60, like that's not a big number. And that was 2011. So, you know, yep. numbers may have altered yep. um, from them. And the pain hospital, funny enough, um, talk about being in the right place at the right time. They actually specialised and had the best surgeon and doctors for these type of twins in the world, not just wow. Australia, like in yeah. the world, um, who Dr Valero, so my doctor, she was seen under, I think it was Cooper, I don't know, I can get back to you with Pacifics, but um, so he was there in the pain. So that was kind of cool. I was like, wow, like the universe really does deliver you kind of what, what you need. You need exactly yeah. when you need it um so we obviously had to have some pretty heavy conversations in we just wrapped our head around okay we're gonna have a baby now we're gonna have two babies now we're gonna have babies with complications do we want to proceed and that was something that was very presented very early in the piece like we were medically given that we could um I don't know what the correct terminology is here, but like have an abortion um, yeah. it would end our pregnancy based on me medical reasons, really. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we we were like, no, because I I'm a and so and so is Dave. He's like, we'll just work it out, you know. Like you know, we were given a gift and and we'll work it out. It's all right. Yeah. Like, we've got this. Um, so anyway, so we proceeded, um, and it literally was a roller coaster. So they nicknamed our babies, um, A and B and every two weeks I had to have an ultrasound, which was annoying and uncomfortable, um, and testing as well. Um, and lovely at the same time, because every two weeks it changed, you know, yeah. they sort of, they'd balance out. And then one would go up and then one would go down and then one would go up. Yeah. And, go down. Um, and then we got to 18 weeks um, and things were good. Like everything had been good. I was, you know, I was good. Life was good. Babies were good. We were okay. Um, and that, that was quite normal too. We were explained to as well that, you know, things can sort of, they can level themselves out and, and everything will be okay. I just, I knew that we potentially couldn't do a full-term pregnancy um, yeah. because of the type of twins that they were, that they would sort of get us to about 30 weeks and then induce and then they'd be intubated and hopefully then they could have a better quality of life by, by doing that and any complications yeah. we could yeah, fix. Um, anyway, we got to 18 weeks um, and my ex-husband ex Dave um he was away he was in Newcastle and I'd taken my mother for the ultrasound um and she was doing the ultrasound just as per normal and I was so excited because if you haven't seen twins on an ultrasound it's really cool it's <laughs> it's such an incredible experience to just see these two little humans because they are like just kicking it in there it's such an incredible thing you think one and when you see two it's just it's amazing so you should google that just for a bit of <laughs> feel good um so i went along with my mother and here i was i was so super excited wait till you see you know first grand not ch child but two like straight up and dr valera was she turned the ultrasound off and she's like stacy i'm really sorry um, I can't find one of the heartbeats. So, um, and I had no idea, absolutely no idea, no signs, no, no physical signs, no sort of anything because they were in that same sex, same percentage. So at 18 weeks, I'd lost what we called our baby Jackson. Um, so he had passed. Um, and, and Dr. Valera said, you know, it could have happened within sort of 24 to 48 hours, but it's just, um, I don't know, thing, you know, it just happened. There was sort of no real uh, answers, if that makes yeah. sense. Like it's just, 
uh, an unfortunate nature occurrence. But at that point, they wanted to, you'll have to help me with the word each year, because um, I'd refused to do it, but they wanted to take, I'd refused up until this point, they wanted to take their embryo mucus, you know, when they, they stick the big needle in and they do that test. What is that test called again? Oh, to be honest, I don't really know. Like, okay. I... No talking about though, because they do... Yeah. But so... What they do is they, they have it on an ultrasound and then they, they stick a huge big needle in and they withdraw the fluid from within your sac. So you like your, yeah. you know what I mean, your sac. Yeah. Um, and then they, they test that because that's then, again, they were then concerned for downs. They were concerned yeah. for downs and, and, and other things. And it's, it's quite a common test, but there is lots of complications with it. And especially if you're an older, more mature woman, I know they, they push on it a lot more because I've had girlfriends have babies in their forties and it's been, you know, they've had to, they've had to have that test. Yeah. Anyway, so we were booked straight in to have that done. And that was weird because that's another ultrasound, this giant, and I mean giant, yeah. giant needle going in and they go in through your belly button and they withdraw um, the fluid, the fluid that's around your baby. And so here's our, our live baby, like grabbing it, like it was, you know, like <sighs> or an object, like it was, it was so weird. Dave had flown back, well, d drove, but at a very high speed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I had to ring him. So I had to ring him when I was in the, in the surgery with my mom and say, um, one of the babies has passed. Um, and he, I don't think he really knew how to react. He just jumped in the truck and drove. So he was there with me um, when we had, I can't remember that. That's going to bug me all day now. Anyway, we had this test right. run and he was there and even he was like, it's so weird. Like the baby's like grabbing at this giant needle. Um, and they had that tested. That takes a long time. So that was, you know, anxiety and crying um, and just a mess. And then, and also too in shock, cause like, you know, we'd gone and looked at two car seats and yeah. get a car for two and we've got to have a house with two cots. And so now, now I've got one baby, you know? Um, and we also made the, the, I don't know, crazy decision to get married in amongst it all because that was important to my husband was we all had the same name so here we are trying to have it literally a shotgun wedding <laughs> <laughs> in amongst everything else that's happening in amongst everything yeah. else. um and so we were we had a house in sydney and we had a house in Bankman's bay and we were both doing the commute like this like it was just it was mental and trying to pull off a wedding having twins with complications um, and just trying to keep it together. Anyway, so what happens when you have uh, identical twins, same sex, same placenta, is even though one has passed, you still continue with the pregnancy as per normal, like as per you had yeah. a normal baby. Anyway, so off, off we went. Um, I had the test done and they did, you know, another monitor and measure and everything else and all these results went off and, Anyway, I was like, okay, well, just wait and see, wait and see, wait and see. Anyway, um, we then ended up at Mary Meads. Uh, it's, it's just outside of Parramatta there. It was a children's hospital, so it's a children's hospital. Um, so our second baby, um, he presented with a hole in his heart. Mm. Um, and so because he... From what, from what, you know, they sort of estimating, because it's just, it is estimations. They don't yeah. 110% really know, um, is that he was the baby who had lacked uh, the nutrients to start okay. with. And yeah. so in developing, he had formed a hole in his heart. Yeah. Um, so now we are down this journey of, okay, well, we know he's got a hole in his heart what can we now do? Like, well, you know, do we go to full term? Do, you know, do we get induced sooner? What sort of happens? So anyway, so 
awfully sort of trottled. <laughs> Again. Um, again, with another thing, um, the results came back from the the embranes or the mucus or whatever it's called um, in reference to the fluid and everything was fine then, numbers were good, you know, there was no signs of downs, there was, there was nothing of genetic concerns that they were worried about because again, our, so at this stage, so we were past 20 weeks, 22 weeks maybe, um, it takes a long time for that test to come out. We then fell into a medical board. So at this point now, a medical board could actually make a decision whether we could or couldn't keep our child because okay. of the ongoing um, complications um, and, you know, partly, I suppose, genetics and forming and things like that. Our case was then submitted to a medical board that if, we did then decide that we didn't want to have our baby. They got to make an overall decision. And they also got an overall decision if we shouldn't have our baby. Yeah. Um, so that that in itself was was quite full on. I never knew that was a, a thing. No, yet. never did I. Um, but, but we sort of didn't have to tread too much water in there. Like Dave and I were both pretty firm on, well, um, you know, it is what it is. And we're, and we, we're pretty tough. So we will... We will, you know, we'll deal with it. And it was weird actually, um, because everywhere we went, we would then see Down syndrome children or yeah. like adults. Um, and and it was weird because I was like, is the universe just testing us, like to see, you know, are we going to be socially okay? And, you know, obviously anyone who's watching this right now, you don't know me personally, but I'm you know, I, I wear some pretty wild outfits and I'm, I'm very, I'm not nor, like not the stereotypical normal. And, you know, and my ex-husband, he's all covered in tattoos and big beard and, you know, people stare at us anyway. So, you know, to, to add, and I, and I say it with a place of love, you know, if you have a child with a ability, I don't like the word disability, um, People stand because people are rude and people are cruel. And, you know, um, it was almost like the universe, like, can you handle it? You know, because we were looking too. Do you know what I mean? And Dave was like, they're just so beautiful. They're, they're better than normal kids. Don't worry. About, we'll be fine. Like, he's like, and they'll be like us. Like, it, it's not, it's not going to be an issue. It'll be fine. And I'd be sobbing. And he'd be like, it's fine. But at the same time, it was fine, you know, because you, it doesn't matter, you know, the gift that you get, you, you love and, it, and it's yours. So yeah. anyway, so we went on and I thought I needed a tissue then. Um, <laughs> we, got, we got results back. So all good on the downs and the genetics, you know, um, things. But we had a hole in our heart. So we were off to the children's hospital and had more scans and things like that and we were waiting to see have a letter back actually so i was waiting to get a letter back as to what sort of figures because doctors like to give you statistics and figures um the results would be on this hole in his heart so his hole in his heart the valve that connects through that was quite thick and they thought over time that may sort of open and it would be okay and it would sort of be a bit of it could fix itself but again yeah. it, was a, it was a monitor and wait type of thing yeah so anyway we got married um <laughs> in a month's total still <laughs> we got married in a month's total um yeah so we got married on the 3rd of december and then because i'd i'd missed one ultrasound before our wedding i i was running late the car the car had broken I hadn't broken down I was at a service and they'd run late and I couldn't get to my destined ultrasound yeah. and I rang and they said it's all right we'll see you you know next week I was like okay too easy so off I went headed home to Bateman's Bay you right darling okay mummy's still on the zoom oh grab to eat darling um and then so we got married and then we headed back up to Sydney because I had you know, my ultrasound and all the rest of it. And I woke up four o'clock in the morning. I was like, mm, something's not right. Something doesn't feel right. Like I just, you know, I had lots go on with, you know, life had been quite busy and 
lots it obviously plays in the back of your mind of course and yeah. then um I woke up and I was like, something's not quite right. And I remember getting Dave's hand and pressing it on me, on my belly, and just saying, um, just know that we love you. Like, oh, was, wow. um, I just, like, and he was asleep. He can have one of those, darling. And then, um, and I did, like, I remember, like, grabbing his hand and just being like, know that we love you. Yeah. And then in the morning... I went to the bathroom and I was like, something's not right. I don't know, like a bit of, you know, female intuition. Yeah. Um, and anyway, I rang my mother-in-law and I said to her, something just doesn't quite feel right. And she's like, here's my yeah. boy. Um, this is my rainbow baby, actually. It's yeah. <laughs> um, and she said, you know, what time's your appointment? And blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, you know, it's not till 10 o'clock. And she's like, okay. She's like, you know, don't overthink about it. Don't worry. I was like, okay. So anyway, so I went to the hospital, went for my normal checkup and um, I was in having my ultrasound. And so Oi, because, mate. hold on, hold on. Peaks, that's his name. Professor Peaks. Okay. So, <laughs> I knew it was something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, because I was part of his clinic, what would happen is I'd have to see the intern doctors first, you know, and they do, you know, all my checks and yeah. I go through the story. And anyway, they put you up on the little table and they just get the little heart monitor. Yeah. Sure enough, there was nothing there. Um, and I was like, is everything okay? And she goes, oh. Yeah, and we were 26 weeks at this stage. Wow. And she's like, oh, sometimes that can happen. And I'm like, uh, heard it every other time, but okay, because you're the professional. Um, and I guess for them too, it's, you know, socially awkward. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, trying to be sensitive because you just don't know how anyone would react. Yeah. Anyway, so they stuck me in a little waiting room on my own, which always makes you feel awkward when you're like, and you're away from the people. It's like, keep her away. Um, so I sat out there and I rang my girlfriend, Trace, and I was like, yeah, they can't, they can't find the heartbeat on the little booper thing. Um, I'm just waiting. And then they brought Dr. Valera across. So she came across from her private practice. <gasps> and popped me up on a proper ultrasound and um she got me because i said to her to, so she had her back to me like this and she's on the on the computer thing and i was laying on the bed and i was like he's not there is he because don't do that darling i'm on a zoom that's annoying um and she was just she just said i'm so sorry stace and yeah. uh, you know she wanted to cry i think because she had been with us um from I banged down her door. Yeah. <laughs> this crazy lady banging down her door. And she was like, you need to help me. Someone needs to help me. Um, oh, that's butter, darling. And then, um, oh, it's butter, honey. Um, so I said to her, I said, can you please ring Dave? And would you believe it? He was in the castle. <laughs> So, again, he had to get the second phone call of mm. um, we've lost the other baby. Um, and then the emotions rode in because I was like, well, you know, nothing's happened. Like, I, you know, I thought when you lost a baby, you know, you'd have some bleeding or cramps or pain or, you know, something. Can you hop off, darling? Because mummy's trying to talk. Thank you. Um, um Anyway, she said my body hadn't like hadn't sort of acknowledged or recognised, and I was like, "So what happens now?" And she's like, "Well, we have to admit you into hospital, um, and we have to birth." And I was like, "Okay." I'm like, "You need to ring Dave." I was like, "I can't, I can't ring him again." So she yeah. rang for me, and I was there, and again he blew everything in the truck. Yeah. And uh, drove down at fast speed. I think he said he left his drill at that job site yeah. <laughs> that time where it came just, off on the highway. So I think, like, guys, it was just get in the truck. We've got to go again. And then um, anyway, yeah. can you go turn that alarm off that's going off on my phone? Thanks, Tom. 
And then um, I think it's downstairs, huh? And then we spent the night at home because he asked for that. He said, can we please go home? Like, I want to, I don't want to drive straight from Newey to, to back to Sydney. I, can we have a night at home? Yeah. So we had a night at home, which it was weird because it's, you know, we, we're not having a baby now and I've got two still babies in my body. Um, yeah. And we were just kind of a mess, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Two babies. I do have two babies now. And then, anyway, so that next morning I had to fast and we were admitted into the pain hospital. And it was it was pretty confronting, actually, because where we were in the hospital, people are delivering their actual babies. And yeah. then we're in this little section where we're all delivering still babies. Like, I wasn't the only person there. Um, and so that's quite hard because you're actually hearing live babies being mm. born or you know things happening um and meanwhile you're in a room oh that room i'll never forget <laughs> that room it's like this white little box with anyone who went to a Australian school will relate that clock that just goes tick 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 i swear governments public schools and hospitals all have that like generic like the government must have produced that <laughs> clock and it just goes like, tick 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 <laughs> I was like, it was like, it was horrendous. Like both Dave and I were like, that clock, that clock's got to go. Like it was just, it was awful. So we're in our white shoe box with our tiny bed and he had a little pull out couch thing to sleep on, which was just not even, and a bathroom. Um, and what they did is they induced me, but they, they use a tablet. So they actually insert that into your cervix, so through your vagina. Um, and okay here i'll show you two five eight nine six seven okay um so they they put this tablet in and that starts to soften everything up and it tricks the body into that you're going into labor um because of my age and because of how far i was along obviously without a second baby, uh, they preferred to use natural birthing um, than say having a Caesar. Yeah. Purely because the body can heal. Do you know what I mean? And it's a lot of, a, a, as much as it was quite confronting experience. Um, sorry. Oh. Um, having having to go through like a, a surgical seizure scarring all of that type of stuff would actually be worse is how they yeah. do it um yeah. so you get so you get this tablet i can't remember if i ate or not probably not i don't know and then and then the nurse comes in with the deceased papers because our baby was over 20 weeks um, yeah. in australia it's classified as life um and and then obviously a death. So here we were, we were married six days. We're in a hospital and we're filling out a death certificate essentially. Um, and also had to work out, we weren't allowed to leave the hospital until we'd arranged funeral arrangements for, for the, the birth um, of our child. So that was weird in itself. Um, yeah. And Dave was never one to do paperwork as it was. So then here I was, ringing people saying like hey we've got a stillbirth um and the complication of our history in so i didn't just have one i had two yeah and i'll never ever okay done. Talk to you now. all right um um i've never um heard an analogy that was probably so crude but when i rang and had to explain you know i you know one baby has passed at 26 weeks but i also have uh my first baby who's still inside of me that i will be birthing um and he passed at 18 weeks one at funeral place said that my first baby was hospital disposal um hospital disposal so waste essentially yeah. Um, and I was mortified. I was like, Dave, I, I can't. I said, you know, I, I can't deal with people 
to call my baby waste. Waste. You know, I just, I can't, like, you know, clearly, because they had a list of people that you could contact, there was about, I don't know, five or six people on it. So they weren't new to to this this industry or these, these things happening. Anyway, we found, we did find a place that was happy to take boats because you can't just leave with your babies yourself. Like, you know, yeah. it's quite clinical. Um, so anyway, so, and we had to arrange that. We were like, it was a, a sort of a, you know, we had to have it done before, yeah. before we left type of thing. Anyway, so I remember saying to this nurse, because I've always been very natural and very in tune with my body. And I said to her, I was like, how many of these drugs do I have to have? Because I, <laughs> I don't even take the doll. <laughs> <laughs> and um she was like oh dear you'll be here for days and I was like days oh, no yeah. way I'm not yeah. staying here for days we've got things to do and if I <laughs> tick 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 you'll be taking me down to the mental ward because I just I cannot stand it so anyway um I had three tablets and and it was quite full on it was quite intense um the scariest thing I think I, I've ever seen and you, many women might have seen it before, but they put what they call a clone into the toilet so that just in case you pass it past your child, yeah. um, it falls into like a plastic dish. So yeah, it doesn't okay. fall down and go through the waterways of the toilet um, because obviously they, they wouldn't have known the exact size of the fetus, um, like of Jackson, because he had been, you know, past 18 weeks, and then he actually starts to deteriorate within my body, which is weird. Weird. Too. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that having to have that clone there. Anyway, it was like four in the morning, and I was like, Dave, I'm either going to shit myself or we're having a baby. You want to get that nurse? Because I told that nurse I was not staying here for three days. Shows on. And he's like, all right. And I was like, no, I'm serious. And, and we had no prep or preparation into how to birth, what was going to yeah. happen, you know, should I be on all fours, should I be against the bed, like, you know, should I be laying down on my back? And I, and I was, like, it was literally like what I have just seen in, in movies. Movies, of yeah. A woman lays on her back and puts her legs up and I was like, seriously, I there's, there's that much pressure there, Dave, you need to do something. So he's on, like, out the door, like, hollering, like, nurse, nurse. <laughs> And anyway, I, I passed, I was on to baby number two before the nurse turned up. And I remember looking and it was, it, they were like grey, they were tiny. Um, and it was pretty upsetting. By the time the nurse come, Dave had delivered both babies. Yeah, um, wow. And then the nurse just tried to cover everything up, which I think was just an instant reaction. And, and, and I think a lot of that actually could have been avoided had we been prepped and yeah. kind of knew what could have happened or what we what to expect because we had no idea like absolutely no idea what's going yeah. on yeah um and clearly you know in the past people are there for three days you know yeah. and and you know maybe you know they don't really listen to to other other people and they're like no 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 like this is happening it's happening now yeah but anyway so we they wanted to give me more drugs. They wanted to give me drugs to get the placenta um, out. And I was like, no, I'll just, I'll birth it on my own. I'll birth it on my own. Like, let me be. I, don't, I can't have any more drugs. Give me nine more drugs. I just, I refuse to have any more drugs. And anyway, so I, I did birth the placenta, but the placenta had actually broke. So um, we didn't know, obviously, at the time. But you need to be very quiet if you're here. I didn't know at the time, but some of the placenta was still inside of me and they hadn't yeah. checked that properly. Um, and we, darling, mummy is trying to do, this is not going to work. You need to take that elsewhere. Yes, darling. Um, so Dave and I just wanted to get out. Like that was it. It was just like, get us out of here. We've filled the paperwork. We've had the babies. Um the people who who do, they come around, they give you little boxes and they give you knitted clothes. They take photos. They take clinical photos, which you can take with you. And then they also dress the babies in um, little, like, hand-knitted stuff. Yeah. And they give you um, bears of hope. 
um, they give you some seats so you can go on Planet Tree um, and a card. Um, I know they try and give like a, a gift to mum, and I still have that box. Yeah. Oh, um, you know that I I have that stuff in there. I suppose you know if it was to ever happen to come here, Dylan. You know my daughter or someone close that wanted to see or something like that. It's stuff in yeah. two. And that one underneath eight. And then um anyway, so then we just wanted to get out. We're like, can we go? You know, you know, what medical stuff do we need? Let's let's go. And then this is the crazy bit that neither of us anticipated. So we have a still babies, we do a funeral, well, paperwork for some sort of funeral. Um, and then we go home, but my body, my body is prepared for a baby. So my body started to produce milk. I started oh. having like the, the after contraction. My, like, I'm quite heavy chested as it is, but my boobs were like up here full of milk. I, no preparation for this. No, what do we do? What happens? I didn't, I didn't think, you know, but my body, that's your body. So yeah. my body's like, well, you've had the baby. Now we're producing to feed the baby. So where's the baby? Yeah. And then that was excruciating. We were on every like natural remedy. We're on Google, like Dave drove from one end of Sydney to the other to find me figs <laughs> because figs apparently dries up like the, the milk glands and stops you from producing as much milk. And I mean, I had milk to feed an army. <laughs> <laughs> and cabbage, I neither yeah. of us to this day will ever eat cabbage again. It's literally <laughs> stunk like a cabbage farm, like our sheep stunk, our hair stunk. I, you know, he would wake in the night and there'd be milk coming off me because it was just because it's your body. Your body is just so incredible, so absolutely incredible. And and I'm eating figs for days. I was I was literally just living off figs to try and make, but it was so what it hurt. I. I do feel for any woman who's ever gets mastoid, 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 mastitis, yeah, mastitis because um, it's just it was excruciating pain. Yeah. Um, but we sort of, you know, we trekked through that, and we 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 decided to cremate our babies. Um, and we, I, I have a small urn that they went into. I can grab that for you, Mimi, if you like. Um, and they actually sit on my windowsill now, so I, I see them every day the sun um but so we opted for that because we thought a funeral was a bit weird for us like and what do we say yeah. we'd stand around a, a hole in the ground and but i've got a girlfriend who she opted for a funeral, similar situation but we went with the urn and you can you know we can go anywhere um and then six weeks later because you have to go for you know just like a normal pregnancy you go for your follow-ups and everything I was admitted into emergency because I uh, that placenta that placenta oh. was stuck and I nearly died. If, if Dave hadn't got me there that day, um, oh. I would have died. And so he's my poor husband. <laughs> he's like, I just married her. We've just we've just picked. Up. And I think it was just two days before we picked up our, our boys um, in an urn. And then here I was on a medical bed with the placenta so they had to do an instant surgery i had to have a, a whole scraping of of my uterus lining everything um because it the piece was about that big like it was yeah. it was it was quite huge um because dr valera she because we went in and i said something's not right i'm i'm in pain and i like you're feverish like you're sick because it's it's toxic poisoning um and anyway, she put me on for the ultrasound and she straight over, like I was straight into a mood, like straight in for surgery, like prepped and off to go. So, um, and then, and then the healing process began really, to be honest, um, which because of our age, we, you know, we turned to alcohol. Um, I picked up cigarettes, um, been and on again, off again, smoker. So, you know, a cigarette for your stress. Because, yeah. you know, you were like, you are thankful in your blessings in, okay, well, I don't have a child who could have multiples of complications of things. And that was one thing too that came up that day 
that Memphis, that's what we called our son. Yeah. Um, the day that Memphis's heartbeat had stopped, I got the letter from the surgeon at uh, Westmead's. Yeah, I think it's Westmead, Mary Mead, um, that he had a 3% chance if we got him to full term to do the surgery and survive. Yeah. That was his um, percentage percentage rate um, of survival if he made it through the pregnancy it was was what the was what the clinical yeah. <laughs> clinical letter stated. So that on itself, you know, like we were counting our blessings in, you know, we were married and we're gonna get through this and then um, you know, make that commitment to each other and then, you know, blessing that we're not having to deal with, you know, complications and surgeries and things because I was freaking out if anyone has looked at um, children or humans who have heart defects it actually affects not just their heart it actually affects the whole nervous system and especially I was quite concerned with a boy because children who have heart or boys who have heart defects or holes and things they don't actually experience adrenaline so okay. I was really nervous about that. Like imagine having a 17 year old boy who jumps behind the wheel of a car and goes oh. at 120 kilometers an hour and doesn't feel adrenaline. Like, you know, and, and anyone, you know, oh. adrenaline, like going really like speeding or yeah, going down a big hill fast, even around a push fight, you know, adrenaline yeah. kicks in. Like, so imagine being well, one, a boy, cause they, my, my French, but they do dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine a boy who's going to do jumping who doesn't experience adrenaline, like who doesn't, like they like they actually don't develop it. Like it's part of, I don't know, there's, there's, there's lots of research that you can Google that because I, I was freaking about that. I was like, and you know, because, you know, obviously myself and my husband, I know our personalities and we, you know, can be quite oh, reckless probably isn't the word but um you know like to live on the edge so imagine having a child who can't feel those full effects of living on the edge you're just like oh no this this could this could be bad <laughs> um but yeah so then we just we went through the journey i found it quite difficult uh being in a small town at the time because we then we relocated to the south coast of Bateman's bay and yeah. there was no guidance or support. There was no counselling. Um, I'd seeked counselling from the Anglican Church. who They had a grief group, which literally was for people who's, like your husband had died. You know, you'd been married for X amount of years um, mm. and your husband died. There was, you know, there was a lady who, her son, uh, he was, he was run over um, and, you know, her son was 10. Um, so, you know, she, she knew, she knew her son, you know, yeah. she, had, she had a grief there. Does that make sense? You know, yeah. just like a person who'd lost their husband or their wife, you know, the, um, the grief counselling group, that was the only thing that was available. Um, they actually knew their people, you know, yeah. um, there wasn't anyone who could relate um, yeah. everyone has empathy for you uh, but nobody actually really gets it because well, it's just it's just so foreign you know and I guess to within the church community some of the older ladies like it had happened to them but it wasn't something they talked about yeah. so they didn't get upset about it um, you know you weren't allowed to be emotional about it um, and so that was quite hard and and for my husband he was not big on emotions to start with. Um, and being a bloke, you know, you just, you don't really reach out or talk to anyone about that stuff. You just, just keep to yourself. Um, so there was, someone coming to me now. Chip, uh, Poppy was tiptoeing behind Nana Cat. It was <laughs> cute. Pretty cute. Um, you know, so together we were sort of, we were a mess. You know, we were both, you know, I was trying to seek some answers um, yeah. and, you know, both of us even for a, term, for a while there, like used to say, you know, oh, well, um, pretty pissed off at God, to be honest. Like, you know, we were, we were, we were pretty cranky, um, even though my husband wasn't very, like, 
still isn't very spiritual, but you know, his only way to sort of deal with it was he went, he sort of went that way and used that terminology. I was sort of seeking some sort of guidance and some sort of answers, you know, how to, how to process the growth. Um, so that you could, because, you know, you'd walk down the street, I'll never forget. I don't think this girlfriend will ever forget it either. And she hadn't seen me because I was, you know, walking down the street like big belly, not a big belly, but pregnant, you know, like pregnant. And then I'm walking down the street and there's no baby and no pregnant. And, you know, people would say, oh, how's your baby? And I was like, my baby's not. And they're like, oh, my God. But, you know, depending on where my mood was at, dependent on whether they got an empathetic stace or they just got a blunt like, well, my baby died, you know, yeah. because I was fighting my own demons in a sense. Yeah. Um, which, you know, is hard. So I think that's why I quite openly talk about our experience because there was no one when I went through it. Um, a couple of people reached out through sort of social media because, you know, I use social media as a, as a brilliant platform for that um, or for many things, but, you know, in particular. Yeah. But in at the time, there was just absolutely nothing. It was just sort of my own. And even the, the literature that I was able to find, so dated. Yeah. Just so <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, we just, we, we went on a journey. We were very self-sabotaging, um, self-destructive towards each other, sort of stuck together with each other, but then, you know, against each other at the same time. Um, I don't think either, either of us blamed one another, but we were just trying to get back to a normal because we didn't, we didn't know our whole life had been turned upside down, you know, we'd, We'd sold cars and, and bought like a family car and all of a sudden you'd have a baby. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it just, it was quite full on. And also to our family, like, I know my own dad, like, he was just a mess. He didn't know what to do because, you know, he'd never experienced it himself and, and he couldn't fix it. So that yeah. was quite, quite challenging for him and frustrating for me i had to drive a mum car and not have a baby i was just like this it's just you know it's just a through us for for lots of different things um so when we finished self-sabotaging <laughs> we decided that we we did want to have a baby um and we went on what we called a three-month preconception diet so we had no wheat no sugar no alcohol no no cigarettes nothing um and cleaned up our act and we i crazy but like i was like pick the moon and the dates and got very down with nature got very um you know as as healthy and natural as i possibly can be and then um we conceived manna so and his actual name means gift from heaven yeah um, that's precious Oh, thank you. Um, that's just it. When he popped in before, he's what they call your rainbow baby. Yeah. Um, and I, we home birthed him. So I, I did. I knocked down doors again to be able to find a midwife so that I could home birth because my experience at the hospital, not that anyone was not fabulous, like Dr. Valeria was amazing, but I just didn't want to go back there ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, I can totally understand that. And, <laughs> and, um, you know, if I, and and that's what I said from day to day, I was like, if I could not go back there, then, you know, I, I would not. And I would have liked to have home birth the twins had it been a, a normal type of pregnancy. Um, but we were underseen under Dr. Valero throughout the whole pregnancy. So all ultrasounds and blood tests and things were gone through her even though um i was fit healthy you know everything was fine it was just it was just a freak pregnancy really yeah. like our twins like it was just a i don't know just a, a thing i suppose i don't know there's nothing i don't really have any real answers even you know yeah <laughs> nine years on like it's still just uh i don't know it was just one of those, it, it happened yeah um but yeah, but then we, we conceived Nana, beautiful, fine, you know, having that 18 week again scared the hell out of me. I thought, oh, here we go, like, you know, prepare for the worst. 
and everything was fine. Um, and even the day that I knew I was in labour with him, I remember sitting on the toilet having that same experience flashed back as I was in the hospital yeah. toilet with that cone. And I remember having to say to myself, all right, Stace, this is it. You're not having a dead baby today. You're having a real baby. So yeah. get up and let's get it done. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> with no midwife. <laughs> Again, there was no... <laughs> The poor guy. I know, I know. And but she, she was on the phone. She was on her way. And then yeah. um, she walked through the door after Mana was born. Um, but I think for both of us, I think especially my husband, um, having that experience with Mana and birthing a, a real child, um, a live child, yeah, was his healing. Does that yeah. make and like yeah. he got that was his closure then you know like he 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 then he healed um but it you know that that in itself was a uh, you know a very um an amazing experience totally different pregnancy like totally yeah. different birth birth was incredible and you know manna he really is like a gift. I, I reckon that child could probably rob a bank and I'd still think he was amazing. I don't do it anyway. But, you know, like, it's, yeah. it's just, uh, you know, I don't know, just really just teeled apart. And because I never knew if I wanted to have children, to be honest, like I, I, I didn't think children was ever going to be part of my life. And to then have the experience I did with twins, um, to then go on to be able to move forward from that and be like, you know what, actually I do want to have a baby and yeah. then have manna and it was such an, such a beautiful, incredible pregnancy yeah. um, and, and birth, really. I didn't think about how, how crazy the birth could actually be until, until it was all over, actually. I remember thinking, what if the cord had got stuck or something, you know, but I just, at the time, I couldn't think like that. I just... I did. And I suppose being pregnant again too, healed a lot, went through a lot, you know, you read lots. Um, yeah. Because we had to have all the same tests and things done again just to triple check everything. Um, yeah. But everything was good. And then a week out of Manus' first birthday, we conceived May. Um, and she was a little surprised. She was a surprise. <laughs> um but, you know, again, another, you know, beautiful, healthy pregnancy, home birth. Again, no midwife. Dave, with, it, with Manor up his back this time while I was in the shower. <laughs> we didn't even get to the, you know, the nice sanctuary and, the, and you know, the lounge room with the, the lights. <laughs> it was just, um, and he caught her and, and off we toddled. But, um, you know, both two very close together. Beautiful, yeah. um beautiful children that yeah. you know they may not have ever been had we not had our experience to start with to be honest yeah um, yeah so yeah that's that's it in a nutshell <laughs> is that enough <laughs> that's a lot and I really like there's been moments of your story that's just given me goosebumps oh. and brought some tears to my eyes so I really thank you for you know sharing that um, and I think just to finish off, if I know you said like what you did, um, you know, you went on a, like your three month cleanse, you sort of, um, felt like you got back in touch with like nature and did stuff like that. Um, specifically is if there's something that you could give in a, in advice, like to mm -hmm. someone else that's going through it, mm -hmm. um, what would you say? That's just that's just lost their baby. Yeah, um, if they're just in the in, either in the thick of grief or they're just trying to find a way to move forward to heal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's one book that I really loved that I read was Louise Hay's um, "Heal Your Body." Yeah. Um, because it's you know it's very emotionally attached as well as physically because when you have just had a stillbirth, there's there's physical trauma. Yeah. as well as there's emotional trauma um, and to be kind to yourself. Yeah. You know, that's really at the end of the day to be kind to yourself and talk. And if you can't talk, then you need to learn how to journal yeah. um, and, and thank your blessings really, because as much as it's, it's a sad and a 
and you know a second time you know for all of us it, it could be in amongst a whole bunch of other stuff you know you may have other children or you know you haven't had a child yet and so there's so many so many other things so you need to look at probably every aspect and thank your blessings and that took me a long time to to get to that does that make yeah. sense yeah um but most importantly to be kind to yourself you know yeah. remove the blame because it's you know remove that remove yourself out of blame and victim mode and and talk about your experience because really that is probably the best healing yeah mechanism um and try not to feel sabotage with alcohol <laughs> Um, um, says me who's you know taking a year off drinking alcohol but um, you know it's a quick fix at the end of the day alcohol will remove those feelings for for a period of time but you're yeah. still gonna have to deal with them yeah you're still gonna have to deal with the with the grief um, but that's my speaking like you know being yeah. in a group and sharing with others is really crucial for your for your own mental health really yeah and that's and that's what it will come down to and that's what it does come down to is um is your own because you know an experience like that like it it could go one of two ways do you know what i mean like yeah it, it really can um and you know you're allowed to have shit days and that's okay too like accept that, like stay in that moment. Today I'm having a shit day. I feel sorry for myself. I'm drinking wine. I'm eating chocolate and staying in my pajamas and I'm going to cry on the floor. You know, I did that. Dave laid, laid on the bathroom floor with me. I'll never forget that. Like he, I was having a shit day and he, he laid on the bathroom floor with me. I, you know, I was trying to do my makeup and I just, I couldn't pull it together. Yeah. And I laid on the bathroom floor and I cried and, you know, there's probably no one else in the world that I could have had that experience with than him. And we, yeah. and we laid in that moment, we stayed in that moment. And then he's like, you know, come on, we got to get up. And if you don't have a day in your life, well then you have to self talk yourself <laughs> and we got to get up or you ring one of us, yeah. <laughs> ring one of us and we will say, get up. You know, you've had your moment and, and that's it. It's about feeling the moment and then moving through it. You know, it's the same with your blessings. It's, yeah. you know, experiencing it, being thankful and then moving forward. Um, because if you stay in a blaming mode or, you know, hating on yourself for too long, that, you know, you won't go anywhere. You'll, you know, you'll, you, you hurt yourself. You hurt yourself more than the experience that you that you're currently going through or being yeah. through is yeah. is what I reckon. <laughs> so amazing advice. Absolutely. Thank you. And I and I totally I second everything that you've said. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. But, you know, you just you can't you can't stay like you're allowed to stay there and be like this is shit and feel sorry for you and that and that you know everyone you know i even i have that you know years on yeah still have that um but you but you do for your own for your own well-being you do need to move through it and that's why being thankful of your of your blessings um yeah. can help you sort of move past that i yeah. think the best um yeah and people thought we were dead set crazy when I was like, we're having a home birth? We're having another baby? We're having a home birth? And they're like, oh, she's dead set, lost the plot. And I was like, nah, we are. And we did. And we've got a beautiful, you know, beautiful boy and then a beautiful girl. My daughter, unfortunately, did have developmental, um, but completely nothing to do with pregnancy or home birthing or anything, but just yeah. a totally different child. So yeah. even, you know, that in itself, I was, I was not prepared to have another child after Manor. Like, Manor was like, he's it, golden child, we're set for life. Like, yeah. you know, I'm good. I don't care what the rest of the world thinks. He's my spoiled child. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, sometimes, whether you're religious or not, it's like we have a plan and God has another one or, you know, you think you've 
got all your ducks in a row and then the universe throws throws something else at you. Um, yeah. You know, it's just about how quick you get back up and, and keep moving. Yeah. Um, and, and I really don't like that analogy or someone else has got it worse than me because it doesn't matter if someone's had it worse than you. It doesn't mean that you can't feel what you're feeling or have your moment, you know, and your moment might be six months hanging yeah. out in pyjamas eating chocolate drinking wine. That's what you've got to do. <laughs> then that's what you do, you know, but tell your people, talk to your people because then, then they can help you. Um, with you communicate but I think I think grief process now is a lot better than what it was yeah um, I would hope so <laughs> I would really hope so <laughs> but but yeah but that but you know it is it is super hard because you you know the as the mother you you feel all the things you know and you have a connection as the father it's hard and then as the outsiders the family they have no idea what you're going through because they haven't carried that child. They can only think what it would have been like for them. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's some women, not most, but, you know, women have had miscarriages. And, but that in itself is different, again, to going to, like, I mean, walking down the street, like, even when you was pregnant, like, oh, hey, Stace, how much longer till your baby comes? To walking down the street three weeks later to, Oh, so you've had your baby. How's your beautiful baby? Where's your baby? Oh, it's your baby at home. And I'm like, my baby died. Like, it was just like, you know, so different. Yeah. Um, and hard and just socially, because everyone's socially awkward. People yeah. are still socially awkward about it even now. Yeah. To me, because, you know, people are curious and they want to know and they want to help. Um, but just, you know, be mindful if, if you do have a back moment like I did one day and just like barked at someone was like, well, my baby died. Um, go back to that person and apologize and say, I'm really sorry. I'm just, my, my stuff's all over the place at the moment. Um, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. And that's part of grief too. Um, I found that, you know, the seven stages of grief. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's quite handy, but I think you have to be in quite a good headspace. To try and to try and navigate that, yeah. Um, especially if you're not analytical, yeah. I think you have to be in a very good headspace. Um, so that means not drinking wine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> to, uh, to try and move move through that. Yeah. Like, um, but otherwise, it's it's brilliant and it's and it's a bang on point because you do you. You go up and down and your anger and you're upset and you blame. Um, yeah. It's a it's a it's a great uh, book and reference, you know, points. Um, yeah. But like I said, you have to you have to have shifted through some of some of your own personal personal journey and, and emotions before you can really follow Dive it. Into I it. think. Yeah, yeah. That, that's just what I. Unless you're analytical. If you're analytical, then you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> fine with that with that with that process with yeah that mm. yeah awesome thank you so much <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> amazing <laughs> yeah we've been talking for a while so <laughs> i'll let you go and tend thank to you. your kids and you can have a glass of wine thank you so much <laughs> oh you're, you're alcohol free I'm, I'm wine. I'm, I'm, i made i made a uh a decision for no booze for 12 months. Yeah. It, um, I, dumbest year ever. Not drink <laughs> alcohol. It's all I can say. <laughs> I woke up on the 31st to being evacuated with the bushfire and I was like, really? Really? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> but anyway, we're nearly halfway through, so I'll be yeah. fine. Yes, but anyway, you will but, be. But um, happy. I don't, I don't care wherever you use it or whatever, but if you... Um, someone wants to talk to me or something furthermore or whatever, by all means, reach out. Yeah. yeah. So how, if um, someone wanted to reach out, so how would they find you? Are they going to contact you? 
Well, contact me. <laughs> if they, well, obviously, if they want to talk to me, they can contact me. But if they specifically wanted to hit, oh. like, speak to you about um, your story and if it's something that they've experienced and they want to have Does someone. Because where, where do you share this blog? Is this on your page? Is this, this on your website? This will go eventually, yeah, onto um, probably YouTube, my YouTube channel um, and onto my website. So at the moment with this, it'll just be social media. I might share it into the group initially and then if people want to reach out once yeah. I've sort of created more of a space for it, mm -hmm. um, you know, if they wanted to obviously for, for help I that's why I'm here for them um, but if they wanted to reach out to someone who's shared their similar story um, oh yeah yeah Just emotional yeah, yeah. Um, well of course social media yeah <laughs> just look up Stace Boller <laughs> and you will find me on Instagram Twitter Facebook <laughs> all over that um, all over that yeah so yeah. that's probably the easiest and um please tag in that it's come um from from here yeah um, and that it's a you know it's in reference to your own journey and and pregnancy and grief etc because um if you just tag in on social media <laughs> you could get a hey do you want to do the 30 days to healthy living or you know <laughs> or like random <laughs> yeah, yeah like, um yeah so yeah so just uh, you know either either of those platforms are, are perfectly fine yeah um but just yeah in that personal message or when you send something just make sure you put in reference to to Our this video. yeah <laughs> our zoom chat yeah chat. yeah um yeah but and, yeah. and the funniest thing is you wouldn't believe it so when that we did the preconception with Mana, it's pretty much what I now coach in the 30 days to healthy living, yeah. but I didn't even know it. I didn't yeah. even know it at the time. Even when I did like the three month preconception, I didn't even really know what that was. I just, I knew, yeah. you know, like a sixth sense. I was like, let's just clean ourselves up. Let's do give the best that we could possibly get and yeah. see what we get. And, and we do, we've got, you know, to us, rock star. He's a total rock star. <laughs> um, yeah. you know, he just may not be that later in life to someone in his family, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to us, he's a, always, you know, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. All no. right. Well, thank you. I'm well glad done. that we, we got to do this and you've got some content there. Um, and hopefully, you know, even if it just touches one person's heart, then I think, um, 